The PlayStation Portable, more commonly known as the PSP, was Sony's first crack at the handheld console market, originally releasing in 2004 to compete with the Nintendo DS. With advanced graphics and multimedia capabilities, the console had a strong showing in the Nintendo-dominated handheld market where so many others had failed to make a dent, and the PSP has created a lasting legacy. Of course, a huge part of that legacy is its back catalogue that's absolutely filled to the brim with crowd-pleasing classics. From Grand Theft Auto to God of War and Final Fantasy to Loco Roco, there really was something for everyone. And most of those games still look great on that high-quality screen too. What if you've played all of those though? And are on the lookout for something that might have slipped under your gaming radar at the time? Well, we might be able to help with that, because we've got a list of 10 games right here that are great, but never really got the interest they deserved. That's right, we're looking for buried shiny nuggets again, and this time it's PSP titles that we're panning for. I'm Ashton from Triple Jump, and here are 10 hidden gems for the PSP. Number 10, Brave Story New Traveller. Not only is our first game on the PSP, but it also stars the PSP, with the player named protagonist being so absorbed in whatever game he's playing that he doesn't notice when his friend disappears and falls ill. After finally finding his catatonic companion, the protagonist is guided by a mysterious voice to enter a strange world in order to save her. And that's the basic premise of Brave Story New Traveller. Granted, the most dramatic part of the setup is the bit where the protagonist drops his PSP, sure hope the screen is okay, but it actually leads to one of the system's most underappreciated RPGs. A linear adventure with turn-based combat and an appealing pastel visual style, Brave Story New Traveller has the essence of comforting familiarity that many JRPG fans look for. It offers an adventure filled with satisfying combat and cute characters that isn't going to tax hardcore genre aficionados, but is still likely to win them over with its quality and charm. We also really like the sound effects that pop up when the attacks land during in combat. There's nothing quite like the thwop of sword on armour to get the blood pumping. Number 9, Cladden. This is an RPG. From an RPG that sticks to the basics to an RPG that tries something a bit different now, with Cladden, this is an RPG. Not only does this game win awards for the most unnecessary subtitle ever, but it also offers up a retro-styled, top-down, customizable RPG world to explore. A throwback to 8-bit dungeon crawlers, the name Cladden is short for classic dungeon, Cladden, this is an RPG, puts players in control of one of a number of characters who find themselves in a world created by a powerful sorceress. The combat is in real time. Each character has multiple weapons and customizable abilities, and there are randomly generated dungeons to keep going back to if you're the type who likes to grind relentlessly and max out your team. Set in a wacky and colourful world, filled with entertainingly written characters, Cladden, this is an RPG, also has huge potential for customization, allowing players to create characters, including building the character sprites from scratch, which has potential for hours of creative gameplay. It even lets you choose who the game's antagonist and final boss will be. I'd like mine to be completely incapable of fighting back. Thanks. Number 8. Bounty Hounds the Namco-published Bounty Hounds didn't fare too well in the review stakes, raking in average scores and garnering comments about repetitive combat. Ask the few who took the plunge and purchased the game, however, and you'll find that most of them hold this futuristic hack-and-slash in high regard, touting the title as something of an underappreciated gem. First impressions are good, as Bounty Hounds is one of the best-looking games on the PSP and absolutely dazzles on the compact screen. It also has something of a thought-provoking premise, as players take on the role of Maximilian, the leader of a group known as the Bounty Hounds, who go off to newly discovered planets and eliminate the indigenous life forms. Sounds like a job that might take you to some dark places, literally and metaphorically. Then there's the gameplay, which most reviewers described as repetitive hack and slash, but gamers lauded as a great way to blow off steam, especially considering Maximilian's loadout is customizable from over 500 weapons and items, so definitely consider overlooking those review scores and giving this one a try. Oh, and it's also apparently set in the same universe as Galaxian, Ace Combat and Ridge Racer. We haven't got time to explain that now though, so go and look it up, okay? Number 7. Crush 
The protagonist of PSP puzzle platformer Crush is a young man named Danny who suffers from severe insomnia. His condition is so bad, in fact, that he's admitted to a mental institution where he is treated by an experimental machine created by the decidedly untrustworthy Dr. Rubens. This machine is called Crush, which stands for Cognitive Regression Utilising Psychiatric Heuristics, which is one of those abbreviations that works when you say it out loud, but not when you write it down. Crush also should not be trusted. In a way that's reminiscent of Catherine, these stages of Crush are made up of Danny's internal fears and insecurities, while the machine has him under, and players must guide Danny through various locations, collecting marbles and progressing by flipping the stage through 2D and 3D perspectives. This clever mechanic is used to prevent loads of satisfying brain-teasing levels for players to enjoy. The story is as dark and twisted as the game's aesthetic, and it soon becomes glaringly apparent that Dr. Rubens and his invention do not have Danny's best interests at heart, and that Danny might have to deal with his insomnia for a bit longer. If you're not too busy feeling sorry for the poor sleepless fellow though, there's enough innovative and addictive gameplay here to keep you awake for hours. Number 6. History Egypt – Engineering an Empire Grand strategy probably wouldn't be the first genre that comes to anyone's mind when considering types of games that would fit on the PSP, but this surprisingly well-made History Channel title proves that the genre can definitely work on the go, meaning handheld players can partake in a bit of world domination while on the bus to work or school, rather than just planning it in their heads. History Egypt Engineering an Empire has a very small asking price and a very grand vision, presenting players with a hex-based map and a collection of ancient cities to run and conquer. Starting out with a small territory, the aim of the game is to build wealth, recruit armies, and occupy cities belonging to enemies until your empire covers the map. Once this has been achieved, you forget that save file and start again. I guess you could imagine that your empire crumbled due to infighting and unrestricted decadence or something. It may not look like much, but history buffs and tragedy fans should find plenty to enjoy here. And to have something akin to Civilization, or the map segments in Total War, work so well on handheld is quite the ancient wonder. And and if you disagree with that, well then you're in denial. Number 5. Gravity Crash Portable a fun and challenging multi-directional shooter with a cool retro style, Gravity Crash Portable was also released for the PS3, where it, understandably, was known simply as Gravity Crash. The PS3 version was great and all, but it's the LCD screen again that really makes the visuals of the PSP version pop. The aim of the game is to navigate through stylized neon environments, avoiding hazards and locating and destroying targets, all while the timer ticks down. Things can get pretty tough, so an icy cool demeanor and quick reactions are recommended recommended, but the game's pick up and play nature means that it's ideal to take with you on journeys, despite its difficulty level. Looking like, and indeed taking inspiration from, arcade shooters of yore, those of a certain age might find that Gravity Crash Portable takes them back to those smoky 80s and early 90s arcades, playing the likes of Robotron or Defender, only this arcade machine fits in your pocket. We should also note that a PS Vita port, known as Gravity Crash Ultra, was also released, and this this makes use of the Vita's additional analogue stick for an even slicker experience, so maybe get that one if you've got access to Sony's less popular but equally great handheld successor. Number 4. Crimson Gem Saga while Crimson Gem Saga might sound like it belongs over on the PSP's competitor, the DS, keeping mums and grandmas occupied with addictive match 3 gameplay, it actually sits nicely in the PSP's back catalogue, along with all the other high quality RPGs of Far Eastern origin, and doesn't involve gem matching at all. Also released on iOS, Crimson Gem Saga is similar to the aforementioned Brave Story New Traveller, in that it doesn't particularly push the RPG envelope, but what it does do, it does really, really really well. Presented in a lush, hand-drawn 2D visual style that pops delightfully on the PSP screen, the game tells a story of the powerfully named Killian Von Rokoff, a graduate of the Green Hill Chevalier Academy, which has nothing to do with Sonic the Hedgehog. This young hero finds himself swept up in the search for powerful artifacts known as the Wicked Stones. What ensues is a good old-fashioned globe-trotting RPG filled with adventure, turn-based battles, and a selection of interesting potential parties members to meet. The game is also well written, with some decent voice acting and an agreeable character-driven storyline that involves some unexpected twists later on as the Wicked Stones are brought together. Hmm, I guess it kind of is like a gem matching game after all. Number 3. Snoopy vs the Red Baron 
While Nintendo fans have been enjoying the combination of fluffy heroes and aerial combat ever since 1993, and acting mighty smug about it, might I add, Sony-centric fans of canids in cockpits don't have to go without, thanks to our next hidden gem. Snoopy vs the Red Baron probably gets overlooked by many for its kid-friendly visuals and reliance on classic characters who are sliding further and further into obscurity, but those unwilling to snoop around for a bit are doing themselves a disservice, as this is a great aerial combat game. The story concerns the famous Beagle, who originated in the Peanuts comic strip way back in 1950, living out his doggy dreams of being an ace pilot in the First World War. This results in a surprisingly smooth and arcadey flying experience, where players take on missions and challenges, shoot down enemy pilots and locate hidden collectibles, all in an effort to save Aerodrome Island from the Red Baron and his forces. Snoopy vs the Red Baron was also released for the PS2 and PC, but the PSP version got the highest review scores, thanks to the game's suitability to handheld gaming, enabling would-be poured pilots to enjoy the cartoony dogfights on the go. Oh wait! Dogfights! <laughs> I just got it! Number 2, Jeanne d'Arc one of the very shiniest of gaming's hidden gems, Level 5's Jeanne d'Arc for the PSP had some very tough competition. As a tactical grid-based RPG on Sony's handheld, it had to compete with the likes of Tactics Ogre and Disgaea, not to mention the excellent Final Fantasy Tactics The War of the Lions. Amongst such company, it's easy to see why Jeanne d'Arc faded into obscurity, but that doesn't make it any less of a crying shame, and we're here to tell you why. Putting a fantastical slant on the real-life history of Jeanne d'Arc, the game takes place in France in the early 15th century, where a villainous English duke has made a deal with the devil so as to recruit demon troops for his army. After a young Jeanne's village is burnt to the ground by English troops, she is guided by a voice from the heavens to amass an army and save her country from the English invaders. Hmm, I suddenly feel all ashamed. Remorse for the deeds of my ancestors aside, reviewers heaped praise upon Jeanne d'Arc, praising balance and varied tactical gameplay, a deep and intriguing story, and excellent presentation. It's just a shame it didn't come out over here in Europe. You know, the place where all the characters are from. And number one, Deadhead Fred. What's to possibly put at number one on our list, when number two is a beloved and dignified tactical RPG and an inspiring and fanciful tale based on a real-life historical figure? Well, a game where you run around as a guy with a brain in a jar for a head! Of course! This horror-themed action-adventure was developed by Vicious Cycle Software and puts players in the gumshoes of a private detective who's recently been murdered and decapitated. So far, so grim. But Deadhead Fred isn't all about reanimated corpses and dismemberment. I mean, it is all about that, but it's also trying to make you laugh, so... The comedic tale focuses on Fred Newman, the reanimated detective who was murdered while on the trail of crime boss Ulysses Pitt. Brought back to life by one of Ulysses' employees, Dr. Steiner, only Fred's brain and eyes were saved. Bad news for Fred's chances of getting a date, but good news for players, as this predicament enables the game's head-swapping mechanic, where Fred is granted new abilities upon equipping different heads. With fun and varied gameplay, a delightfully grim premise, and clever reference-filled writing throughout, it's an absolute treat for those of a darkly humorous disposition. So if you're looking for a fun and unique action adventure to play on your PSP, then Deadhead Fred is a total no-brainer.